Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. If you like my channel, subscribe, like, share. Um, the reason I decided to talk about this topic, which is are racists perfectionists, is because um, I started thinking about myself. And I used to be the type of person where nothing was ever good enough. If I started, I run a magazine, um, and what used to happen was I would re-edit it and re-edit it, and it would never be perfect, and it would never get done. And so I had to, I reached a stage where I had to forego that and think to myself, what is more important? Is it more important to get it out, or is it more important for it to be imperfect? Because I run it by myself. And it's not like I have anybody to kind of proofread it or edit it for me. The few people I've asked, you know, either they can't be bothered. So I'm ending up doing all the work by myself. And what used to happen was I would reread it and find something wrong with it and go over and over and over again, which caused it not to happen. I mean, now I've reached a stage where I just accept it if, it's, if there's errors in it. You know, I don't feel as though I've made the biggest mistake in the world. If people criticise it and pick it and do stuff like that, it doesn't bother me anymore. But there was a point where that even extended to my relationships. No one was good enough. As soon as I did something wrong, I was off. You know, I had no tolerance. And it's a reflection when you're when you're perfect when you seek perfection in others. It's a reflection of how you feel about yourself. You feel as though you aren't good enough, really. And that's what happens with people who are perfectionists. Now, I wrote down, um, then, so I was going on to that, and then I started thinking about my other half, and I was thinking, well, he's a bit of a perfectionist, only he's a perfectionist in a different way. Um, he is hypercritical. No one is good enough. Nothing is good enough. You know, the slightest little um, indiscretion is not tolerated. And, you know, I get to the point where I used to say, you're not perfect. No one's perfect. You know what I mean? No one really cares. And perfection is about other people's opinion. Sometimes it's about people... Um, worrying about what somebody's going to say. So it's almost like peer pressure. So once I'm going through all those thoughts, I started wondering, I wonder if racists are perfectionists because they find fault in everything. We're only talking about racists now. We're not talking about white people. We're talking about racists because they find fault in everything to do with black people. They consider them inferior. They consider them, they're not entitled. And because they think they're inferior, they believe they're not entitled to fair treatment. They're not entitled to good housing. They're not entitled to um, good education. And, you know, that's why the police, you know, the racist police over police. There's, you know, unfair justice systems, unfair outcomes for black people. And I was thinking that, if racists are perfectionists, they're going to believe, because we, perfectionists normally have inflexible thinking. They're intolerant and they believe that they are, not that they are perfect, that they believe everyone else is imperfect and it's to boost themselves up in a way. So if racists are perfectionists, that would justify, in their mind, why they are entitled to certain treatment and certain behaviours and intolerant of others. It was just a thought that was going through my head this morning. I mean, as you know, I did write down some notes. Um, oh, yeah, I did. I also said that when I first started doing the videos, you know, because I was such a perfectionist I would be worried about how my skin looked whether or not you know how my head looked or my hair whether or not to change this or to change that and I used to hate my videos and I used to sit there and I'd criticize them and I used to wear these dark glasses because I couldn't remember what the topic was 
you know, I, I used to have to, I used to think that everything I said had to be perfect. I couldn't look at notes. I couldn't, um, I had to remember everything. So I used to wear these dark glasses and I peeked down at, the, at whatever I was reading so I could prompt myself. But then when I was looking back at the videos, I could see my eyes looking downwards. And then I had an issue with that. And I said, well, that defeats the object because people who are watching the video will know that I'm reading something. There's no eye contact. So then I thought to myself, well, Myrna, the um, dark glasses are a cop out. So don't wear the dark glasses. Just see what you can remember and work with that. And if you need to reflect on your notes, do so, but don't feel embarrassed. Don't feel as though you're a failure because perfectionism is very destructive It's and it's unproductive. And that's how I used to be. Now, I even used to worry about how many videos I put up. What are they going to say if I put up two videos? What are they going to say if I put up four videos? What are they going to say if I don't put up any videos? It was, you know, it's really, really stressful. So you have to reach the point where you just accept you are who you are. You accept others who they are and you just do your best and enjoy the process as it's going along. I don't think about the outcome of my videos anymore. If I have, if I feel passionate to talk about something, I'll talk about it. If I look like crap, I look like crap. I try not to look like crap, but I can in sometimes, especially when I'm not up to it. And then I'll go back and I'll think, oh, should I delete that? But then if I like what I've said, I'm like, oh, what is more important? I'm not going to be able to reproduce that and have those little slants in the video. So I leave it and I learn to accept. And that is what um, racists need to do. They need to become more flexible. They need to become more accepting. They need to realize that there are good and bad in everyone. And you don't have to put another race down in order for yourselves to feel better. It means that, you know, everyone can be treated a court as an individual. So one doesn't get harsher treatment because they're black and another person doesn't get lesser treatment because they're white or less harsher treatment because they're white. And if we can take that perfectionist mindset out of people, it, the world would be a better place. It would be a more enjoyable place. There'd be more humour. Because can you imagine if racists actually laughed at themselves and thought, you know, actually, what I'm thinking is unrealistic. Because what a racist would do is say, there's too many immigrants in the country. But what a realist would say is, OK, there's too many immigrants in the country. Why are they here how did they get here? Does it make sense that they're here? Instead of blaming all the bad things that happen on the race, on, on, on the black people or on people of colour. Now, let me see what else I wrote here about perfectionism. Um, yes, perfectionists, they tend not to give people second chances as well. You know, if they've done something wrong, they tend, they're off, you know, they're totally intolerant. And I was thinking about that, like, with black people and crime, because with black people and crime, a racist will not ease up on that individual. They will not, they will not negotiate, they will not um, ease off the pressure, they will just go in and say, okay, you committed this crime, this is the penalty. You know what I mean? And they're probably, and that is sometimes why there's unreasonable force in these situations, because the racists do see the black people as inferior and deserving of ill treatment. That's the way they perceive it. So racists and perfectionists are very, very similar in their mindset. Um, I don't know if this makes sense to you. It made sense to me this morning. I don't know if it makes sense when I'm reiterating it now. Um, racist, I put, racist put, oh yeah, they're very critical and judgmental. Um, perfectionists are 
and you'll notice that racists have a similar trait. Very critical, very judgmental of people of colour. Also, um, racists equate white as being the standard, the superior standard, a high standard, and everyone is below that standard. No one can meet that standard. And then what will happen with a racist is that they know deep down inside that they are really no better. And so they have that conflict and it can cause anxiety because they are putting someone else down, knowing deep inside that they probably have the same flaws and they, you know, they commit similar um crimes or similar situations they're guilty of them themselves so inside they have that inner conflict which doesn't manifest itself in positive ways um what else was i saying yeah um like i said i now accept my imperfections my house doesn't have to be spotless i mean there was a point where you know if i knew someone was coming around i would blitz my house from top to bottom and you know and it's ridiculous because two twos they're in your house and everything's messed up they're dropping crumbs they don't have that same standard that I've placed on myself crumbs are on the floor this and that and then I get irritated because I I want the place to be clean and I've just decided to let up don't stress yourself I don't stress myself anymore. Anybody can knock on my door, any of my friends. I don't have to think that the place has to look a certain way. You know what I mean? And, you know, it is so much less stressful. Um, yeah, and if I don't feel my best, it doesn't mean I can't. I don't have to do a video. If I forget my words, if I fumble, I don't have to do it all over again. It just takes off the pressure. You would not believe perfectionism is such is so much pressure to try to reach a certain standard all the time. It's absolutely impossible because no one is perfect. So by being a perfectionist, you're setting an impossible task. And, you know, the same with white people, if not white people, if racists um, are setting the task that they are superior and they are better than black people. And you see someone like um, RF, what's his name, the billionaire. They can't equate that. They can't work that out. It bothers them because you've got a black billionaire and you're a racist who's at the bottom of the pile, so to speak, in comparison. How does that happen? I'm supposed to be superior. I'm supposed to be better than blacks. How did that black person become a billionaire? How do we have black people in these massive houses driving better cars? How does that happen when I'm supposed to be superior? I'm supposed to be the best. I'm supposed to be the creme de la creme. And it causes anxiety, it causes worry. They don't understand how that, that happens. And then they take it out in other ways, negative ways. Um, what else? Perfection is not excellence or superiority. Um, what did I else would I say? And yeah, that's what some people think. Some people think perfection is excellence. They try and push themselves and push themselves. And they try to do things perfect. And the funny thing is, the more you tell somebody, oh, I'm great at this, oh, my work is the best, the more that they'll find something wrong with your work. Because no one is perfect. And it's quite irritating to hear someone say, oh, you know, I'm the best, no one's better than me. You know, because no one is perfect. No one. Apart from the father, of course. Um, let me see. Um, and yeah, it just makes things hard for yourself. You know, if you have to set a certain standard for yourself, it's hard to keep keep it up to that standard. I'd imagine it must be quite tiring. Um, don't worry about other people's opinion, because uh, the thing is, is that if you've set a high standard for yourself, you're going to be worrying what other people are thinking when you don't meet that standard. So that's another thing. You have to be very, very careful about that pressure you place on yourself. Um, and racists tend to be um, follow the crowd. They're not leaders, are they? 
racists are not leaders and nor are perfectionists. You'll find very, very rarely that a perfectionist is a leader. A perfectionist could never run a company because their standards are never high enough. They can't keep staff. So they could never be successful leaders or um, entrepreneurs because to be um, a successful entrepreneur or leader, you have to have compassion. You have to have tolerance. You have to have understanding. You have to be able to listen to other people and empathize with other people. Whereas perfectionists, all they'll do is criticize and say it's not good enough. And people will just say, well, blow you then. Do it yourself. That's what happens with perfectionists. Do it your bloody self. And perfectionists, which is the saddest thing, is that they're very lonely because no one is good enough for them. And, you know, and people who are, um, have um, business dealings with relationship, with, sorry, business dealings with perfectionists or relation or in a relationship with a perfectionist, they'll just think, you know, I can't meet this standard. You know, I'm going to go with somebody who accepts me for what I am, with all my little flaws, with all my little foibles, with whoever I am, they're not going to be criticising me every minute, they're not going to be judging me. People don't need that. In this time and life, people don't need that. So the racist, whoever you are, and whoever this applies to, try to let up the criticisms, the judgment, no one is perfect. We're all equal. So, I'll leave it there. Hope this makes sense. Bye-bye.